Danny and Julie here at Experience, so we're super excited. Recently I got promoted to Black Belt and I want to show you guys some little clips of how it happened in Las Vegas during the World Masters at the Convention Center with Master Fabio Jorgel and Master Jacare. Luckily, not luckily, but I should say I was blessed enough to have my beautiful wife and our beautiful son Alex there during the occasion. So. That is the most special day of my life. <laughs> Today is also a very special day, guys. We're gonna show you guys some jiu-jitsu stuff because that's what we love to do. But remember the date, October 4th. October 4th, my friends. Today's our wedding anniversary. How long have we been together? 19 years, 14 years married. He's been putting up with me for that long. It's the other way around. I love him so much. But anyways, let's get to the mats just first. Mm. Can't up and stop me. Hey, what's up everyone? So Professor Danny here today. So we're gonna show you some close guard techniques. Very fundamental stuff, and I teach you guys some details that maybe you forgot. I'm here with my wife, Julie, my beautiful wife that was there, as you saw in the intro, when I received my promotion for Black Belt. Super exciting day. Um, we were blessed to have our son Alex there present. He's not here today, but of course he was there in Las Vegas. Um, during the promotion under Master Fabio Jugel and Master Jacare. So today we're going to review um, close guard techniques as well as maybe a simple drill that you guys can actually uh, drill to improve the technique itself. Okay, so I'm going to have Julie into the close guard facing the camera and what we're going to review is everyone knows the basic arm lock but one of the things we've got to remember is get the techniques of it, the technical details of when I'm posturing onto my opponent. She wants to grab hold of my sleeve. See, by grabbing hold of my sleeve, that will prevent me from escaping my arm as such. See, my elbow and my shoulders are stuck into my jacket. So this starts to reaffirm the grip, okay? But it's not enough for me to power out. So the second thing she must do is if my hands are on her stomach, she's gonna pass underneath and crawl her fingers to my elbow. See, that will reinforce the grip so I can't power out as much. Okay? Now, don't worry about if my hand was on the mat, she doesn't need to go under, she just goes right over. Okay? Now, this is very firm, but it's not enough against a powerful opponent. So, the next thing is she's gonna climb to my shoulder and break my posture even further down. So now if you notice, my own stomach, my chest, is really stacking my own arm. So it's very difficult for me to escape. And to make sure that not only do I not posture up, but power out, she's gonna posture by posting her foot onto my hip and her knee to my shoulder. So now everything is reinforced to make sure I don't power out. But it's still, there's an element missing that if you get someone who's super overly aggressive, that might even posture up dynamically. So what she's going to do to make sure that I can't escape is turn the angle and climb as high up as possible. Notice how her leg, super heavy. Imagine that on your heel, you have 100 pounds and you're stacking the person's back like the person can't even escape. Like it's almost very uncomfortable right now for me, guys. Okay, and then the last part is the submission. From here, she passes her leg over and notice how she drives the weight of her legs. You probably notice my voice is changing right now because there's a lot of tension onto my head and my neck while she's controlling the arm. And last but not least is the submission right here, okay? And if you're not careful and someone does it correctly 
you're gonna get your arm broken. So make sure that if you're practicing this and you're not under the supervised instruction of a qualified instructor, make sure to tap. Okay, it's very important. Okay, let's do this one more time, but a little bit more quickly. Okay, so we're here. I'm posturing up, trying to get a technique, just breaking the posture of my elbow, climbing onto my shoulder, posting onto my hip, turning the angle, and making sure there's a lot of weight. Right now, my arm is sandwiched between the back of her leg and her hips, all right? So I can't re really posture up. When she's ready, she pushes my ears right there, make sure the knees are connected together, and you can break the arm, okay? That's the basic technique of the arm lock. Now, a lot of people are having the most difficulty turning the hips and creating that angle. And if you can't do that effectively, the arm bar is gonna look super ugly, and it's gonna look something like this, where people get control of the arm, they climb up, and from here, not only do they forget the, the posture or break my posture, they just try to pass the leg over like this, okay? And sometimes they'll be flexible enough to pass over the head, but the arm lock ends up like this, okay? So look at this, this is not an arm bar, there's no angle, she's not attacking the elbow, my elbow if she bridges is going to bend in this fashion like I'm hitchhiking and this is incorrect, this is wrong, right? So we've got to make sure that the thumb stays pointed up and she creates a nice angle. By creating the angle, now she has the leverage necessary to break my elbow because she's using all of her body weight, using her bridging action to attack the joint, okay? So how do we get better at turning our hips? I'll show you a super simple drill, guys. It's called the windmill. Basically, all we're doing is going side to side, attacking the arm without breaking the elbows, okay? So we're gonna go here. She's gonna set up to get the first arm lock position. I'm gonna keep my hands onto her stomach. She's gonna get a regular arm bar to start the first repetition. Once we're here, we don't need to lift the hips super high. We don't need to crank our partner. All she's going to do is release the leg that's on top of my neck and push onto my rib cage to swim her legs to the opposite side. Notice how she goes from one side to the other in a pendulum fashion. Let's do two more reps. So we get one here and swing over for the arm lock, okay? So that is one super effective exercise that you can use to perfect the motion of your hips when you're on the bottom. Okay guys, let's switch to the second technique. All right, for the second technique, what I'm going to show you guys, sometimes your partner or your opponent might not always have their hands onto your body. Sometimes their hands might be posted onto the ground, in our case, onto the mats, right beside your body, okay? So now if I try the same technique that we just worked on previously, it's gonna be impossible to catch because the arms are not located at the same place. So I'm gonna use my arm, and I'll do it towards the camera, to grab and seize the wrist, okay? So now, watch what I do. When I grab, I don't keep an angle like this with my elbows. I try to reach out and grab in this fashion. Now my elbow has the best length as possible and I have the best leverage because my arm is locked. If my arm was bent and the person is fighting against me, they're gonna try to free off and I have to be super strong to control this arm, okay? So I don't wanna take that chance. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use C-clamp grip, which is the thumb around the wrist. And notice every time I reach for the wrist, I don't grab it here. I reach far, so I move my shoulders onto the mat from side to side. I create that angle from the upper body to catch the wrist, okay? So we were here centered, I'll turn, catch the wrist. Now my elbow is locked, okay? So now I have the best leverage necessary. If the person decided to switch the grip from the ground to your lapel, I have a better control here than I had when I was here. Okay, now that's taken care of. I turn my shoulders, I grab the wrist. Now I can lean onto my own elbow, uncross my feet, sit up, and posture myself onto the elbow like this, okay? My free hand will wrap over the attacking arm, okay? So technically, I don't want to wrap around the wrist. I want to go over the shoulder and swim my fingers underneath until I catch my own arm. So in this case, my palm will be on her wrist and my own palm onto my own wrist, okay? Once I'm here, I'll lean with the arm, turn to the side, use my foot on the mat to move my hips slowly for camera. And then from here, I'll lean my leg onto the hips and slowly attack the shoulder. And this is called a Kimura in Jiu Jitsu. All right, so let's do this one more time from this angle. All right, guys, from this angle now. Notice, I windshield wiper my back. 
I grab the wrist, I'm controlling the wrist, nice and firm. Once I'm here, lung cross my foot, lean onto my own elbow, I'm here. I like to use my arms to keep tension onto the person's back. I grab around, once I'm ready to trap the wrist, one detail, notice how I wrap my thumb around the wrist. So when I start, I like to control, notice to control, thumb around to push thumb over, all right? This is what we refer to as the monkey grip in jiu-jitsu. Once I wrap around and trap my own wrist, I keep control of the arm, bend the arm 90 degrees, lean onto my back, slowly post my foot on the mat as I shrimp underneath the person, use my leg very heavy onto the waistline, and watch this, thumb around the wrist, and I start to apply the shoulder lock. This is what we call a Kimura. Okay, now a nice little drill to practice this and the coordination from going left to right without having to lock the shoulder is gonna be this drill right here. So I'm here in the closed guard. I can use it where my, my feet cross behind the back or if you're more comfortable, keep the, foot, the feet on the mat. That's no problem, right? Nothing's wrong with this. But what I need to do is trap the wrist. One, lean and come up here. Release, trap the wrist. Lean and come up here. And I'll keep doing this motion as I get comfortable, faster and faster, and speed it up, and speed it up, and speed it up, and speed it up. Notice, I just pretend, I mimic the Kimura lock. I don't need to wrap and attack the shoulder every repetition, right? I'm just mimicking. The idea is once I know that I can seize the wrist, post up on my elbow, and get to here. I know there's a multitude of attacks that I can do, especially when it comes to the Kimura, all right? These little exercises are super fundamental, but they're super essential in your progression for Jiu-Jitsu. If you want to get good at close guard techniques, especially Kimuras and arm bars, do these drills every single day, 20, 30, 50 reps if you need to, and trust me, you'll improve your Jiu-Jitsu game vastly. Okay, thanks for watching our video, guys. Until the next video, keep training hard. If you like the video, leave us a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel. We're gonna be making more videos weekly. And last but not least, if you wanna see anything specific, make sure to post the questions in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Can't up and stop me.